Good afternoon. It's August 4th, 2024, and it's the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And this weekend we continue our theme on the Eucharist and understanding our relationship with Jesus Christ in the lived reality of the Eucharist. And in the Gospel today, the people ask Jesus, what must they do to believe? And Jesus says that you have to believe in the one that the Father sent. That would be him. And of course they ask then, well, what sign? What sign do you show us? And of course, they don't get what they're looking for and they don't necessarily get what they understand. The sign that Jesus left us is his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. So if I'm going to believe in the one that the Father sent, Jesus Christ, then I need to believe in the sign and I need to believe in the fullness of the Eucharist. The sad part about it is, is it's hard to believe in that. You know, that's can't prove it scientifically. You know, we have the Eucharistic miracles, but people still poo-poo that. They don't want to believe. Because the problem is, is if you do believe, then you kind of have to change the way you think. It's like, we have a lot of Catholics who don't come to church regularly. And that's been the history of the church. Yes, I believe in Jesus, but I don't have to go to church. Except that at the Mass, Jesus is putting on a meal to feed us. And not because we deserve it, but because we need it. And the meal that he's providing is his body, blood, soul, and divinity. And he's inviting us into this relationship through his body, blood, soul, and divinity. St. Paul refers to us as the body of Christ. What makes us the body of Christ is that we have Christ within us. But do I get that? And do I have a sense of reverence for it? Do I understand my relationship with Jesus Christ lived out and through the Eucharist? Pew studies tell us that 30% of Catholics definitely do not believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And sometimes that's understandable, but it's also in part of the history of our faith. People question, people doubt, and people sometimes walk away because it's hard to believe. But that's nothing new. In the Gospel of St. John, Jesus says, If you do not eat my body and drink my blood, you will have no life within you. And many found it a hard teaching and they walked away. But Jesus didn't go running after them saying, Oh, you're misunderstanding me. You know, I'm just, it's not, it's not really, it's just a symbol. And no, it's not just a symbol. It really truly is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And for many of the people, especially the Jewish people, with their attitude towards blood and their attitude towards, you know, eating flesh, well, you got a problem here. And they walked away. And of course, Jesus turns to the disciples and said, are you going to walk away also? And Peter goes, where are we going to go? You have the words of everlasting life. Do we understand his profession, his profession of faith? And the same thing we have St. Thomas. Thomas doubting the resurrection. And of course, in his doubt, Jesus appears to him and says, Here, put your hand on my side, put your finger in my hand, and believe. And Thomas goes, My Lord and my God. In the celebration of the Eucharist, in the celebration of the Mass, when the priest elevates the body of Christ, when he elevates the blood of Christ, and then he steps back and he genuflects or he bows profoundly, the people of God should be bowing their heads and praying, My Lord and my God, just like Thomas did. And part of that proclamation inside of ourselves saying, My Lord and my God, is us professing our faith. Do I really truly believe that that is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ? And the readings this weekend are there to challenge us and they're to make us feel uncomfortable because they're inviting us to reflect on my belief in the Eucharist my belief in Jesus Christ, my faith in Jesus Christ. Because, as the Gospel says, what must we do? Well, we must believe in the one who the Father sent. Do we believe in Jesus Christ? Well, if I believe in Jesus Christ, do I believe in the gift that he left for us? Do I believe in the Eucharist? Because I can't walk around saying I believe in Jesus Christ, but I don't believe in the Eucharist. Sorry, it's not compatible. It's sort of like denying a chunk of the scriptures. It's like denying the Last Supper. 
Yes, I believe in Jesus. Yes, I believe in his teaching. But no, 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 that's too far. That's too far. And we become just like the people of the gospel. And this was a hard teaching and they walked away. Well, yes, of course, it's a hard teaching. It's supposed to be a hard teaching. Following Jesus is not easy. And in many ways, it demands that leap of faith. Do I believe? Do I truly believe? And so we're invited to reflect upon it. And part of that is there's a lived reality that goes with it. In the United States, they've been going through a Eucharistic renewal. They just had a Eucharistic Congress. And a lot of people were very challenged by this. And we should also. But one of the issues is, have we become complacent? And there's a certain level of complacency in our lived reality. Do we hold the reverence for the Eucharist that we should have? Do we hold the reverence for Jesus Christ that we should have? Have we become too common with him? You walk into many churches today and there's people who walk right by the tabernacle, don't even acknowledge it. They walk by the altar, don't even acknowledge it, right? They kind of lost that sense of the sacred. At the same time, we've got people walking around wearing rosaries, wearing little bracelets saying Jesus loves me and all that kind of stuff because it might make them feel holier, but it, that doesn't make you feel holier. Now, they're nice reminders, and they should be nice reminders. It's part of our faith that we have these sacramentals that remind us of our walk with God. But the sacramental doesn't make us holy. The holiness comes from an attitude within. It comes from this and this, aligning ourselves with Christ. It's kind of like walking up to receive the Eucharist. You know, I don't care. You want to receive on the hand? Fine. You want to receive on the tongue? Fine. Just do it with reverence. Just do it with reverence. You know, the person who comes up and, you know, they're not even present. Right? You can tell that they're sort of like not even conscious of what they're doing. Or they're conscious of what they're doing, but they're not really there. I'll give you a simple example, right? The person who comes up and their hands are kind of like all like this, but you know, they don't know what to do with their hands. Or the person who comes up and the thing is, their hands are, are like this, kind of like, are you asking for a blessing or do you want to receive on the tongue? And their mouth is like, just open, but I still don't know what you want. If we're going to receive the Eucharist, our hand is supposed to be a throne for God. If we're going to receive on the tongue, we're supposed to stick our tongue out and make a throne for God. He is our Lord and Savior. He is the King of Kings. He is the Prince of Princes. He's everything. Where's my mind? Where's my heart? Is my reverence for him fully consciously there? And I guess that's part of the problem, is in many ways we've become unconscious. We're not fully, fully aware of our Lord and Savior. We may claim him as our Lord and Savior, but our lived reality isn't quite congruent with that. We're supposed to be challenged this weekend. Where's your belief in Jesus Christ? Where's your belief in the Eucharist? Where's your faith in God? On a scale of 1 to 10, where do you fit? And if you're trying to tell me that it's 10, 10, 10, and 10, I'll see you in the confessional, because I will be the sin of pride. But it should be up there. It should be up there. With the awareness, there is a need, constant need, for growth and development. It is August 4th, 2024. It's the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. May God continue to watch over you, bless you, keep you safe all the days of your life.